Bobbly, bobbly, bob. We are back. We are back. We are back. Shout out to the CIA. One loves 
to the FBI, the Feminine Beautiful Inspirational Ladies. How are we doing? Your godfather is back in the house. And of course, the house is, as always, is packed. How are we doing, everybody? Welcome back, Friday night. Tonight's show, uh, I promise, is going to be an interesting broadcast. Uh, get your popcorn. Get your popcorn because we are about to go there. We are about to go there. Um, candle of the evening. Limited edition from Dip Tea. House is limited edition from Dip Tea. The five wick indoor outdoor candle. Ombre. Oh, fragrance of the evening. This is a new one. And whenever Le Labo comes out with a new fragrance, it's a big deal. This fragrance is called the Matcha 26. I'm going to tell you right now, I love this stuff. It's a, it's a tea-based fragrance, but it is so freaking on point. It is so on point. So, how's everybody doing? Hope you're well. Let everybody get in here. Because uh, I think tonight's going to be important. I think tonight's going to be important for several reasons. But one of the primary reasons tonight is going to be so important is because I think we're finally starting to key in on what I would consider to be the root cause of a lot of stuff. You know, what we talk about over here, obviously, is relationships. And women across the board for over a year have been calling in saying they want to be married, want all these things. But unfortunately, uh, across the board, not seeming able to get them. But here's what's going to happen. First off, we got to get to keep the engagement up. Over 50 percent. You got to keep the likes up because if I look over, we get this. Yeah, we don't want that. We don't want that to come back on. So we got to keep the engagement up. That's only fair, folks, uh, because especially when you're doing content like this, Sometimes YouTube is fickle, uh, and they may decide, you know, hey, we don't necessarily want you to talk about that particular thing right there, so it's up to us to keep the engagement high. Okay? So let's get into this. Modern mothers create wounded, fearful daughters. Okay? So in that title, I crammed a bunch of things in there. Hold on just a second. Hold on just a second. Preacher prayer cloth. <laughs> My preacher prayer cloth. What is this? What I said. Modern mothers create fearful, wounded, and fearful daughters. Gentlemen, I need you guys to pay attention to what I'm about to say. Modern women are where they are today, and it's not their fault. It is not modern women's fault. As to why they're not wives, why they're not better at relationships, why they're in the position they are in. And I think it is, and this isn't a joke. This is not a joke. I'm dead serious. You got to look at it from a certain standpoint and realize that even though it's not, they're not at fault, but it is their responsibility, you got to ask yourself, what were they taught? What were they taught 
by the society, by the community, by the media, and at home. What were these women taught? Not what they were told, what were they taught? Because what used to boggle my mind is how many beautiful, intelligent, sexy, sophisticated, just bona fide, incredible black women in general that I've met in my life. And I'm just like, how are, how is somebody like you unmarried? Raise your hand, black man, if you have ever said this to yourself, how in the world is a woman like you still unmarried? It used to confuse the hell out of me. But then inevitably, whether you're on the friend side, or on the dating side, you start to see a lot of the same things. Fear, scarcity, and lack. Dominating how a lot of these women think. Fear, scarcity, and lack. And when you're in fear, scarcity, and lack, the byproduct of that is anxiety and stress. Why do you think we have so many women that are overweight? They're eating their feelings and emotions. But see, I, I, I know a lot of you guys probably just think, is this Kevin? Yes, this is Kevin. And I want you guys to understand that I understand where a lot of this stuff came from. But what we're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to do this so you guys can hear it for yourself. There are a lot of things I'm about to go into, but one of the most important things is something I want you guys to hear right now. And I got really serious about understanding the relationship she had, understanding, understanding the relationship that she and I had and how when I looked, it had affected every area of my life. It affected how I parented my son because I grew up thinking that she was the best thing ever. So I was going to parent. What you're listening to is a woman describing uh, what we see far too often, especially in a black community. It's how women, and see, when I say modern women, I'm talking about women from Generation X, well, baby boomers is where all this started. Baby boomers were the first strong, independent, I don't need no man. Generation X was the generation after that. And a lot of those people, and, and we're the first generation that those new ideals that came along in the 60s, my generation is the byproduct of all that. Then the generation after my generation is the millennials. And then the Z and the Zennial. So you got to understand that we're talking about from a period of about 1965, when if you were an adult in 1965 and having children, the woman you're hearing speak is the byproduct of those women. And she's referring to her mother. Just like her, which was fucked up. It affected my romantic relationships because I was dating men who were just like her. Emotionally unavailable, toxic, mean as hell. Providers, but emotionally... She's describing how so many women who good looking got their head on their shoulders still end up dating men who are toxic, emotionally unavailable, blah, blah, blah. But what they're really doing is they ended up dating, looking for love like their mama. I'm going to just let this play. Go ahead. Emotionally bankrupt. It would affected my, how I parented my son because I grew up thinking that she was the best thing ever. So I was going to parent just like her, which was fucked up. It affected my romantic relationships because I was dating men who were just like her emotionally unavailable, toxic, mean as hell, providers, but emotionally bankrupt. It would affected my career because I had no self-confidence. 
I was hypercritical of myself. I didn't believe I made good decisions. So in jobs, I, I was smart, but I just couldn't follow through. I was indecisive as an entrepreneur. I, I didn't trust myself. And the more I began to look at how she shaped who I saw myself as, I knew the only thing I could do was heal from that relationship, right? But the first thing that I had to do was realize she was never going to change. I had to give up all the hope of her changing, right? And not from a point of, from, from this defensive way, like, well, she ain't never going to change anyway, so fuck it, I'm just going to move on. Not that, because if we're honest, there's still that longing there. There's still a pain there when you remember when it comes back to your mind, like, damn, I don't have a loving mother. You know, the shame that accompanies that is still there, right? So for me, I really had to release this fantasy because suffering, all suffering, now write this down, all suffering is fighting against what is. All suffering is your inability to accept what is if you think about anything happening in your life that you don't like right now big or small it is all because you are fighting against what is when you are in traffic and you are running late and somebody is driving slow in front of you and you are mad the only reason you are mad is because you refuse to accept the reality, and the reality is he's driving slow in front of you and you are powerless. And the worst thing we wanna do is accept that powerlessness, right? Because you're still powerless, but you think if I you know, rage against the machine, maybe you know, something will change, which is a childlike trait. Children throw, throw tantrums because it was the only way they had power. If I scream and I holler, I can get the attention and someone can change the situation, right? But because of our trauma early on, our complex trauma, we never developed and learned other ways of coping. So we still are in some ways throwing a tantrum. It's just the tantrum is interfacing, right? I want you to think about everything that woman just said. And there's some women right now who light, light bulbs are going off on. I said this the other day that when I was a child, when I was five, six, seven years old, the women who were 40 and 50 years old were mothers and grandmothers. They were, they were, they were grown women who were at that time in their life they were living their lives for their families, their husbands, their communities, their churches. They were living selfless lives. Today, we got 40 and 50 year old women who are still trying to figure it out. Still out here dating. We got women in their 50s and 60s who were raised, who raised millennial daughters who these women, even the women, think about the women who uh the young girls who I had on, the younger women who I had on, I have on four different women who say they were raised in a two-parent household. Their parents are still married to this day. Yet every one of these black, every one of these women, their mother taught them nothing about men in relationships, taught them nothing. The one thing, the two things their mothers taught them to do was to go get an education and to not prioritize a man. Even though one woman was a stay-at-home wife of adopted children. Why? Because baby boomer generation is going to go down as a generation of the most selfish Americans ever. They, they blew everything. All the gains and inheritance, that, all the gains that had been acquired, especially in the black community, the baby boomer generation blew it all. They passed nothing down to their to the to the generation X. 
Generation X got the short end of the stick. And Generation X is a generation right now between 45 and 50, 40 and 55, or 41 and 55. And this is the generation of women right now who I, I, I've been saying that it is going to be you ladies that are going to have to accept the fact that you've had your time. Your time was the 90s when you counted as a double minority and you had the short haircut and corporate jobs telling black men they wouldn't crap. It is, it is this time. It, but here's what I'm asking these women to do. I'm asking these women to admit that it's over and start telling younger women, I'm sorry. But it goes against human nature because... All they're doing is what they were taught, how to survive. Generation X women were raised by their mothers to survive. They taught their sons how to serve. So every woman after that, if this sounds familiar, you're likely suffering from what's called mother wounds. Now, I am not a, a clinician a psychologist or psychiatrist. So I'm going to tread very lightly on this topic. There are people who are far more skilled at this. And this is their actually, this is their actual subject matter. Seek those things out. But I have a platform that I think it's important to actually bring this to the forefront. So, so many of you ladies can realize that you're walking around choosing men, you're choosing love, choosing. <laughs> If you keep choosing the same man, look at your mama. Did your mama dote on you and love on you? Oh, I, I'm sorry. Be before we go down that path, let's do this real quick. Before we go down that path, let's do this. Now, again, get the likes up, people. And I'm going to open the call line because the, the bottom line is, even though it's not your fault, ladies, it is your responsibility. It is your responsibility to address these things because... Uh, your mother is not going to admit fault. Your mama is not going to admit fault. She's going to tell you, I did the best I did. How many people in the chat room, how many people in the comment section saw the, uh, watch the TV series, The Sopranos? How many people in the comment section watched the movie, the, 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 the series, The Sopranos? If you, if you watched the, the TV series, The Sopranos, put a, put a, Put a nine in the chat room. If you've watched the TV, if you've watched the TV series, The Sopranos, put a nine in the chat room. And I want you to understand that so many women today, women in women in general, black women in particular, were raised by Livia Soprano. So many women today, especially black women, were raised by some version of Mama Soprano. Manipulative, conniving, selfish, emotionally closed off, loved her children, but warped them. If you look at Tony Soprano and his sister Janice, they were the direct result of a mother who was emotional, was negligent. Emotionally negligent. Whether she had clinical problems or not is not the point. Let's go through some of these archetypes, shall we? Seven types of mother-daughter relationships and how they influence the daughter's life. First one, the sisters. We're going to scroll through this. I'm going to read through these so you guys can see it yourself. Uh -uh. Sisters. In this case, the mother and daughter are absolute equals, behaving more like sisters. They even compete with each other, and the mother always wants to avoid actual motherhood. How it affects the daughter. Daughter raised by, by these mothers are often more responsible and become leaders. They value boundaries between people, but at the same time, they might feel unloved, emotionally neglected, and fear rejection. Next, best friends. This relationship is built on trust, and the mother is the first person a girl, girl goes to with their problems. The mother is very much involved in her daughter's life and supports her, always knowing what to say and being whoever the daughter needs her to be, a best friend, a love expert, a shopping partner, even a partner in crime. Girls with how this affects the daughter, 
Girls with mothers like these are not afraid to face challenges or take risks. They even feel loved and understood when they initiate relationships and don't fear rejection. Women like... How many women wish they had a mother who they could turn to for real support? Who didn't just raise them like that other woman. I said, I taught myself how to cook. I taught myself... How to Every, here's the thing on Instagram when I would ask women what did your mother teach you how to do their mothers taught them nothing nothing not how to cook to clean no nothing their mothers basically babysat oh shit oh shit you didn't have a mother you had a babysitter oh shit many of these mothers many of these women when you listen to their experiences their mother's like a babysitter one woman said, she didn't teach me nothing, but if I asked her for something, she'd help me with it. But damn, that's not what she's supposed to do. Asked her, what's a, son, what's a father supposed to teach his son? Oh, he's supposed to teach his son A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But then a mother's supposed to teach her daughter how to be a woman, how to be a wife, how to prioritize relationships. Now, Matt, and I understand, I'm talking about all these women, they're products of two-parent households. Mother and father are still married. All of them, nobody's struggling. No one's struggling. One lady actually had it really good. And I'm like, see, we always hear about the dregs and the lower ends. But now what we're starting to hear about is the stuff that uh, uh, when you got a married couple in a two-parent household, selfish mothers, I, 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 I had you and that's the extent of it. Next, strangers. Pay attention to this one. <clears throat> if you prefer to keep your mom out of your life and she's the last one to hear about what's going on in it, your relationship probably belongs to this type. In this case, mother and daughter do not involve each other in their lives. They don't share any problems or thoughts, at least the really important ones. Unless it's necessary, they practically almost don't even know each other. The effects it has on the daughter. Daughters with, daughters with detached relationships with parents are likely to experience depression, anxiety, and they're more likely to have low self-esteem, especially regarding women. A lot of women fall into this category. If you're a pretty girl or if you're a good girl and you got toxic girlfriends around you, if you're, if you're everybody's emotional support, and you got nobody that you can lean on, you learned it right here from your mama. You take on everybody's emotional baggage, everybody, you, everybody's listening ear, but yeah, you got nobody to turn to because you never learned how to be get love from yourself from your mama because you had to be your whole go back to the first part. It also may lead to a frustrating... Uh, in addition, it also may lead to a frustrating partner. Uh, fr it also leads to frustrating relationship with their life partner later in life. At the same time, the girl grows up to be very responsible, independent, and can solve any problems. I'm a PhD. I don't need a cookbook. <laughs> Birth of the PhD right here. Children with detached relationships with their mothers, parents often are more likely to experience depression, anxiety. So you wonder why they're eating their feelings and the size they are? Have low self-esteem. Low self-esteem means you will deal with people who are emotionally unavailable, no matter how much money they make. Because you can't deal with real emotion because you never got real emotion. Like I said, try to try to have a loving, connected relationship with a woman who's emotionally unavailable and detached. She can't even kiss, look you in the eye when she can. You can't look. She can't look you in the eye. When's the last time you you actually had a deep, passionate kiss with a man? Love feels ooh. Stranger kind of mothers develop, uh, make daughters who are emotionally disconnected. To where we let for feelings are actually viewed as a weakness. Why? Because when they would reach out to their mothers, their feelings would get dismissed. So 
This may lead to a frustrating relationship with their life partner later in life because at some point in a life in a relationship, it has to get real. But this person only has so much capacity. But at the same time, these they're very responsible, very independent. Because they can solve the problems by themselves. Like I said, the birth of the PhD. You're going to see two very PhD personalities here. Next, devaluation. Devaluation. This is a similar to the previous one, but it's a one-sided case that involves a narcissist. Be careful with that word. Either one is focused only on herself and cares more about her image than what people think. Rather than an actual relationship with a person. He's trying to look perfect from the outside but devalues her mother-daughter in reality. The, <clears throat> the effect. In cases like this where the mother's a narcissist, instead of actually feeling love, the daughter feels emotionally needy, needs constant reassurance of people's feelings. What's good is she is a great support system for others, very loyal and insightful to people. If the daughter is a narcissist the mother and the mother doesn't try to change her attitude, the girl might grow up being selfish and ignorant towards others. That one's fraught with problems. Next, dismission. Here's another case of one-sided rejection. It typically goes involved by mothers playing the roles of the one doing the dismissing. This happens when she, when she ignores or dismisses her daughter's achievement no matter what she did. You ever talk to a woman who... Can't tell her mother about anything good in her life. Oh, I'm sorry. And in this case, the mother is hard to impress and where she never says she's proud of her daughter being either totally apathetic or trying to make her daughter try even harder or, or, uh, to reach the unreachable. The effects on the daughter raised, uh, raised by these mothers, girls grow up experiencing deep self-doubt, feeling unworthy, of attention or any kind of feelings at the same time they desperately long for love and recognition so if you've ever tried to talk to someone or generally connect with somebody who had one of these kind of stranger mothers or dismissive mothers understand it nothing's wrong with you and when you couldn't figure it out she didn't even know it because what don't we do in this world, especially in the black community? Don't nobody question mama. We can say dads are deadbeat and, and not this and that, but nobody asks what's going on with mom. The cheerleader. In this case, the mom is her best cheerleader, wanting her to get the most out of life and experience everything. This mother is very involved in her daughter's life and wants to be a part of it, refusing to acknowledge any boundaries between them or, or leaving her side. She lives through her daughter's achievement, being both supportive and demanding. It often stems from a mother's dreams she didn't realize and things she didn't experience. Effects. With this kind of mother, a girl can lose her sense of self, might become dependent on people, always need somebody to be by her side and not be able to make her own decisions. I'm going to focus on, uh, I don't need no relationship. I don't need no man. I'm going to focus on my kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You ever met that mama? That mama who is like, damn, am I marrying both of y'all? But inevitably, she had me when she was young and she had to give up her life for me. Daughters like this end up feeling guilty for being born because their mothers are good at telling them that you got what you got because I had to give up my life. For the nine months I carried you, crawled in inside me. No charge. Oh, yeah. Shirley Caesar. Uh -huh. Big Shirley Caesar. Yeah, there's a song called No Charge. But see, no charge can also be flipped around to make a kid feel guilty for being born. It ain't your responsibility to pay your mother back for being your mama. The authoritarian. Woo, y'all ready for this? Strict mom, successful daughter. Pay attention to the stranger in this one. Birth of the PhD. This is a case involving an over-controlling mother who micromanages her daughter consistently, being sure she'll fail without her guidance. She never gives her daughter a choice, nor does she value her own words or opinion. She's very demanding and at the same time saying she does it for her daughter's own good. The daughter, in turn, uh, either openly or quietly rebels. Bull ring, tattoos, accessorized on the CC. Yeah. 
Girls with mothers like this are hypercritical of themselves, have low self-esteem, tend to devalue their own opinions, which may lead to depression. On a positive note, these girls are very responsible and committed in relationships. The net net of it is this. Mothers are the first teachers of the child. Mothers carried us all. And mothers have a and mothers have a direct line into their child's heart, but in particular daughters. When your mother is not teaching you anything other than survival, like I told that one woman, your mother cooking is how women cooking is how women of old used to show love to the family because the food is what grows your people and keeps them healthy. But I want you to ask yourself, how many women today, black women in, in particular, mothers actually grew them with love? Most of them either grew them uh, to be a sister. So you out here trying to uh, twer- think about the stuff you see on TikTok. Mothers and daughters twerking and sharing boyfriends and this and that. Ladies. What I'm trying to get you to understand is you need to examine your relationship with your mother to understand this is your first love, especially in a black community, because 80% of us are raised without fathers in the household. So your love situation, your love map is likely fractured. Why is it that in the black community, when women can see that other women are starting to get married, around 23 to 26. Black women still call themselves babies. I'm supposed to get married to be a baby at 22, 23? No, you're not a baby. Why is it that mothers, why is it the married women who had, what was that woman I spoke to? She said her mother had all her children by 25. But then telling her daughter, you need to get out here and get an education and don't and wait till at least 30 before you even start. Telling their daughters to do the exact opposite of what they're doing, knowing they wouldn't want to get out here. Well, I think it's a pathology that a lot of these mothers, I'm hoping a lot of these mothers don't see. Mothers look at their daughters as their competition. Your mother looks at you and sees the young version of you. In nature, once a woman is no longer able to breed, the male of the species has to go to the younger one. So a lot of mothers are purposely or sub, or or, I'm not going to say purposely, sabotaging their daughter's success with, with, with men so their daughters can be close to them. Many of your mothers You are their retirement plan. You are their relationship. Do you know how many women I know over the age of 35 who live near their, who, who are worried, live, live worried about their single mother. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. You cannot live worried about your mother it's your mother's job to make sure that you're happy well she didn't go to college or she didn't do this or she did that there's so many there's so many women over the age of 30 35 who feel indebted to their mother guilty to where they they would they can never question their mother to where if you even say hey man your mom is out of line You got to say, I remember saying this to somebody. Hey, man, that's some BS. Oh, I I, I could never say that to my mom. When when we both recognize that the shit is wrong. Uh, Let's do this. Daughters who carry a mother wound often abide by unconscious contracts that sound like, as a good daughter, my job is to be the one to reach out, hold emotional baggage, make my mother feel better, listen to her problems, agree with her opinion, never say no, be happy, perfect, and beautiful, be her best friend, never not think or say anything negative about her. I want you to understand this 
Be happy, perfect, and beautiful. That means not be a bother. My job is to raise myself, teach myself everything that I need to learn about a man, everything I need to learn other than how to look like she did a good job. Everything that I need to learn out there, I need to learn out there. I don't need to ask her. I need to just go trial and error. But I can never let the things I don't know or did not learn trace back to her because that would make me a bad daughter if the things I'm deficient in, somebody pointed back to my mom. I know I'm talking to y'all. I know I'm talking to somebody's mama. I, I look at all the women talk about this is me. This is me. Look, gentlemen, why am I, why am I going over this? Because a lot of women don't recognize that they're this. They don't recognize that their mother set this in motion and that their mother reigns so high in their relationships. That's why she can't get with you because she can't get beyond her mama. And that's what that woman initially said. You got to understand your mother is never going to change. You're going to have to heal, i.e. therapy, address this stuff, and move forward. So my goal in doing this was to allow the, allow the women who still have a chance. If you're under 40 years old, you still have a chance. You still have a chance. You you got the, the the closer you are to forty, the less of a chance you have. What do I mean by chance? Well, if you want to have children, you need a husband. And in order, to husband, you need to be able to receive. You need to be able to have emotional availability and be able to receive somebody who's going to be along for be in your life for an extended period of time. This isn't the man. I know. Woo. I know, man. I know. A lot of women are like, damn, I thought my mama was great. I mean, I want you to ask yourself, how many times you ask the average woman about their mother and you start talking about, you start talking about their mother in these grandiose terms. She was a strong, independent woman. She provided for us. And my dad wasn't here. She had to do this, 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 this. I'm like, did she have to do that? Where's your dad at? Well, and then inevitably you find out the reason she had to do all that is because she was insufferable. No man worth his character could stay around. And many times in order for a man to maintain his sanity, he had to leave his woman and his kids because that woman would be using the kids against that man. She's abusing everybody. Libya Soprano. So many times men have to leave. Many times the most loving thing a father can do is walk away from his child because the mother is going to use that child as a weapon against the man. Everybody, they don't care. You know how many men I know have had to walk away from crazy exes and baby mamas and, and because they were not, because they understood that they could not allow their ex to use their child as a weapon. And the most loving thing he could do is to be like Batman in the dark night. Be like the second Batman. When he, in the second Batman, the dark night returns or whatever, where the Joker with Heath Ledger and, and Two-Face Harvey Dent, we said, I killed him, not you. I killed Henry. I killed Harvey Dent, not you. He's like, they're going to hunt you. They're going to do. He's like, I know it. you'll sick the dogs on me. Basically, Batman chose to be the villain because it needed Gotham needed him to be the bad guy. You understand something, women in general, black women in particular, Many men have chosen to be the bad guy 
instead of continually involving their children in their mother's bullshit and have had to roll the dice and say, I'm going to go out on faith that I've done enough in these beginning years that's going to sustain my child to when they reach their majority and they really get to a point to where they can separate themselves and their mother's toxicity, that they can sit down and look at their dad and hear me through my ears. But when you're 10 or 12 years old, living in your mother's house is only concerned about her can't happen. Am I preaching? Come on, man. Come on. That's why I said this is not going to be a highly viewed video, but it's likely going to be one of the most consequential broadcasts I've done because I am entering into the lexicon, the term of mother daughter relationships and mother wounds. Many women have mother wounds. If your mother is a single woman, in her late 40s or 50s, never, especially if she was never married, that you let's be real. Your mom's not rich. You worry about her. If you're a woman that every woman around you uses, every woman around you relies on you to be their counsel. I know so many women that fit this category. They're the one that everybody calls on. And I've actually dated women like this before. And it wouldn't work out because I'm like, look, you got everybody around you. Your friends, your mama, everybody, everybody calls you. There's no room. There's no you left between a job, your friends, your family, your dog. And, 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 and everything else there ain't but that much of you left and the answer is cut all that shit off and let those people fend for themselves but if you did that that would make me a bad daughter a bad friend a bad uh, sister a bad employee and where they learn it from mama mama so, gentlemen, if you've ever under, if you've ever looked at a woman who had on paper had all her shit together and was single as French toast, highly likely something in this broadcast right here is part of the equation for this Rubik's cube. You ever wonder why can't if you're a woman and like why every time I get with a nice man? Or a man, why would I find the kind of man I say I want? I say I want a man who has character and this or that and this and that and such and so forth. And he's a, and and then, but then you, but then you, you end up self sabotaging healthy relationships because you need somebody who's emotionally distant, emotionally unavailable. Your mama did that to you. What are you saying, Kevin? I can't have a, I can't accept love or I can't accept healthy relationship from a man. Not until you address what happened between your, your not until you address your mother stuff. Not until you address your mother stuff. I know this because I've talked to so many men who are like, man, I don't understand. I did everything. Uh-huh. And then she went ahead and went off, and, and, and she and then I'm, I just don't have time. I'm, uh, 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 well, uh, 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 it's like, well, wait a minute. You would rather be stressed out by yourself than dealing with somebody who wants to be on your side. Yeah, that's what they were taught to do. They were taught to be by themselves. They were taught to be resources for everybody else. And you got to think about it. It's rather insidious. The mothers did this and they did it when their when their daughters were too young to defend. You know how many how many mothers turn their backs on their daughters soon as their mother's relationship oh Jesus oh hold me hold my Jesus. Oh, this one's going to hurt ladies. This one's going to hurt. Mm. Do you know how many women 
turn their backs on their children, their daughters in particular, the moment her romantic life went upside down. Meaning everything was hunky freaking dory. But the minute her relationship ended, oh, you got to take care of yourself. Oh, you got to do this. You got to do that. All that stuff over. Oh, no, I can't do that no more. But wait a minute. No, 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 no. I was only I was only I was only the loving mother that I pretended to be when, when I was in love, when my situation was this way. But now that that's not that way. Mama got to take care of me. You good. You'll be all right. I raised you. You tough. You know how many women who did that? You know how many women who will tell you their mama told them they're going to be all right? You tough. You can handle it. And then they turn around and give their mother credit for fucking them up like that. My mother made me tough. My mother made me strong. Your mother made you brittle. Your mother made you scared. That is not something to give your mama credit for. If your daddy had done it, you wouldn't be giving him credit for it. If your daddy had cut you off because his love life went upside down, said, oh, daughter, hey, yo, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, me and your mom went along together, son. That's all right. You're tough. You, you, if your daddy did that, you'd be like, oh, my God. What a selfish mother sucker. Robert, am I talking? And they will sit there and say, mom, I, I, owe, my, I owe my mother for making me tough. No one wants a tough steak, ladies. We want tender, not tough. Your mama made you tough when she should have made you tender. But if your mother had put you first, you would have came out tenderized. So stop giving your mama credit for making you tough. She made sure I could survive. She made sure I could do that. You know how she should have made sure you survive? She should have kept a goddamn man. That's how she should have made sure you survive. She made sure that you'd be okay on your own. She shouldn't have did that. She should have made sure that she kept her man in her house. She should have made sure that she kept her relationship where it belongs so the man didn't have to leave. Because you've already seen that in this 50 plus percent divorce rate, eight, seven or eight uh, out of 10 divorces are filed by the women just because the divorce happened and the man is gone don't mean he left more likely than not she ran him away and you want to give her credit for running your your father away oh well see that's the story you told yourself that's that's the story you told yourself to put mama up here on on, on mount mama rushmore Mama can't be wrong. Mama got to be a superhero. But but mama, but mama, but, 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 but my mama, she she protected me and fed me and kept the bad stuff away and all this other kind of stuff. I mean, yeah, I didn't get hugged on and loved on and I didn't have my fears and I didn't get all that. And it makes me kind of emotionally distant and unavailable and anxious and stressed and I don't get it. And then I, but But surely she did it for a good reason. I mean, I turned out okay. I mean, yeah, I, I can't really love anything and I can't really connect to anything other than a job and a dog, but but surely she had to do it for self. No, she did it for selfish reasons and you were a casualty of it. You were a casualty of it. Own it. She did it for selfish reasons because your mother would not have been allowed to do what she did to you if this had been 70, 80 years ago, your mother would not have been allowed to get back out here and just throw you to the side and let you fend for yourself because you was because you were looking her in the eye. See, many many women because their children are their height say you grown and you all you all are thirteen years old. You know how many women I've learned? Oh Jesus, hold me, hold me, oh. oh. Mm. 
You know what I mean? Huh? You know how many young girls don't even know how to take care of themselves? You know how I many fathers uh, had to teach their daughters how to So when women are allowed to put their romantic lives in their life, mama got to have a life too. Mama got to do what she do. When mama is allowed to put mama first, who suffers? You did. You did. You did. So that's why I say, gentlemen, understand something. The, the reason modern women aren't wives is not modern women's fault. Their mothers did this to them before they even recognized it. They're, a lot of women today are just now recognizing what their mothers did. A lot of mothers today are just now recognizing what they did. I am not saying this was on purpose. That is not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that it's on purpose, but it doesn't change the fact. The outcome is the same. The outcome is the same. Oh, no, no. We're going to have to get these. Uh, okay. So uh, if we want to open the call lines and have women call in to talk about this, we are going to have to get these uh, these do donations up because, yeah, this broadcast has already been limited by YouTube. They have already demonetized this. So thank you. I appreciate it. If you've never donated before, make this the first day you donate because, yeah, this broadcast knew this was not going to be a high... Uh, uh, this is going to be one people are going to have to come into and, and listen to in doses. Not monetized. Again, this is not intended to throw stones at women for being bad mothers. I said at the beginning, I don't believe women set out to do this. I think that basically the society and the world was changing so fast that women were allowed to take their eye off the ball. Because when we, when we start fracturing families like we were doing in the 70s and 80s, the world had never seen that. Prior to 1965, we were married at a rate of 80% in the black community. And inside of 20 years, we were single. We were we are a single parent led house community. That's a lot of change. It takes at least ten years to get the data together, and then you're still behind. What's the solution? If you're a woman and you're under forty, you gotta forgive yourself and get into some therapy. You got to do the work because you to have a healthy functioning relationship is going to be, this is why so, so let me stop. This is why so many women. I'm a PhD. This is why so many women, I got my, my degree in this and they're not worried about relationships or marriage because relationships were bad to be avoided. It's all downside. It's negative. It's restraint. It's confinement. It's being obligated. It's being anchored down. This is why so many, if you meet any women who are 35 or older, beautiful, no kids, who are now just wanting to be married, where were they, where were they at in their 20s? And you, they'll tell you. In my 20s, I wasn't even thinking about being married. I wasn't worried about that. What was I worried? And, and understand something. They all weren't out doing dicks. They weren't all out riding the, riding the carousel. That's what a lot of guys think. Oh, they were just out there dating. A lot of women weren't out doing that. You got a lot of women who were out actually just working and thinking that you know, one day it'll happen, not knowing that they were walking around with a relationship uh, time bomb in their mind. Because if you're not worried about getting married, then every man you pick is a man for short term. That's why you 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 date Mister This or Mister That. That's why you dating a D boy or the, you're dating men who have means and money, but they're not somebody you would marry. 
because you're not picking a man based on long term. You're picking him because he looked good. I like his swag. I like his, I like the way he feel. And what happens to women when they hang around a man for a period of time? A three month relationship turns into a two year relationship and it was never going to work to begin with. So by the time they reach their late 20s and 30s and they finally start dating seriously, they date somebody who can, uh, on paper, seems like the right dude, but they're emotionally detached. And then here comes the next three to four year relationship between the age of 28 and 33. There's usually this two to four year relationship from a guy on paper they could have married. Inevitably, they would have been a fiance. This is where the queen of engagement coming from. But, but, but it's like, well, why didn't you get married? Why didn't you? Why didn't have you? You weren't young. Everything was done together. Why didn't y'all get married? Well, it was mutual. No, it wasn't mutual. You started out with somebody who wasn't capable of getting. Oh, oh. maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Ladies, do I know what I'm talking about? Do I know what I'm talking about? Do I know what I'm talking about or no? Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I'm just making stuff up. Maybe there is no such thing as, you know, fearful, wounded daughters. Maybe I'm just talking. These women really did want, these women really did do their best to teach their daughters how to be wives and mothers. Recording in progress. They, they, they really did go teach their daughters how to, you know, get a cookbook and worry about somebody else. Yeah, yeah. I'm just talking. We're just over here bashing women because, you know, my mama black. You know, that's what happened. That's what happened. Or is it time to admit, ladies, that your mother... While she may actually love you, loved you in a dysfunctional, unhealthy way, your mother, while she may have, you survived your childhood. Just because you made it to adulthood without being touched, and you graduated from high school, doesn't mean your mama did a good job. Just because nothing majorly traumatic happened to you doesn't mean your mother did her job. If you cannot emotionally connect with a man, if you are living your life in fear, scarcity, and lack, which produces anxiety and stress, if you doubt yourself, if you are always fearful of, if, if relationships weren't, if you weren't raised to think of relationships like a kid thinks of Christmas morning, if, you're, if you thought of relationships like a Christmas morning knowing you got a gift bag with socks in there, you got to stop giving your mom all this credit. And just by and by holding your mother accountable frees you. I don't want you to go check your mama. You don't even need to have a conversation with her in this regard. You just need to understand that this is you too. And your inability to thrive in relationships has been hampered by your mother. If you sabotage your relationships, because I don't, I, I, if you've ever had a guy and you've ended up putting your, putting your, he's too good for me or right person, wrong time. Or, you know, if any of these, any of these excuses that women use to walk away from men who in any other race would have been a husband. Well, the timing's wrong. We have more ways to ha allow women to excuse their inability to connect. Right person, wrong time. 
God gonna say that? No, no. All these men were suitable. The only thing that was the thing that was wrong was you. So let's get it. Call line is open. Call line is open. Let's turn it down a little bit. Calling in now. We must have hit a. We must have touched the nerve. You have to turn you have to turn YouTube off in the background. Let me see if it's if I have it running on my iPad. I'm sorry. I had to open up a few browsers. My apologies. All right. So to everybody who is calling in, whether it's on Zoom or the Ask Godfather link, you must turn the turn YouTube off in the background. Only be on one thing. Hello. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm well, and yourself? Good. I see all you ladies in the chat room. So what do you got for me? Um, I just want to say that I am so happy that I found um, your channel. Well, I'm so happy that I worked up the courage to actually watch a video and not just watch clips. Um, when I was active on social media, the clips were kind of triggering, and I had a lot of work through and I just want to say that when you have to detach um, from your mom like that because the relationship is unhealthy, it's very lonely for women. And mm -hmm. in a sense, you're saving yourself, like just moving forward and stuff. Like don't feel down and out. It'll get a little lonesome and you still. Go ahead. Are you talking to me? I'm listening to you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I was just saying that it's, it's lonely once you sit with yourself and you realize like um, that you are not necessarily taught the right way. I was raised between two different women. I was raised with a baby boomer grandmother and kind of when I got older, that's when I started seeking my mom. Mm -hmm. And I just, neither one feel that void for me um in regards to like uh dating and stuff because oh, hold on hold on hold on just a second I, I, hold on just i want to make sure i get everybody in i want you to start to kind of ramble on just a second okay <laughs> all right all right ebony you ready yeah hello uh you're not your audio is not on Try again, Ebony. Well, reload. Reload, go ahead. Renee. How are you? I'm good, Kevin. Good. How old are you? How old are you? I'm 40. 40. So what do you got for me? Well, what I have for you is I'm trying to meet you. I am. Wait for it. The ideal wife. That's me. For My whom? I am from Oklahoma. Your ideal, I, you're, you're the ideal wife for whom? By my mother. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're the, you're the ideal wife for whom? I mean in general. Okay. It's a concept. It's a, All right. a philosophy I've developed lately. Okay. And meeting you, I mean, 
watching your videos kind of help that. I just finished anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you have on the What do you have on the topic? I told you, my mother seriously um, did a number and had me messed up for forty years. Mm. I just I just realized I had high functioning autism spectrum disorder. When did you fit? When did you realize this? <laughs> like four months ago, maybe not even. Huh? Are she, you? Are she you? Had it. So deep inside me that I didn't even know it was there. I had no idea, and I've been aware since I was three. Hold on, hold on. Memory. Hold, on hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just a second, just a second, just a second. Hold on. I know everybody gets kind of excited to kind of just talk, but we got to do this in, in in tandem. So, um, Vanessa, how are you? I'm good. Can you hear me? I can. How old are you? I'm 24. All right. What do you have on the topic? So I can definitely relate to your topic because I am my mother's only child. She had me at 43 years old and I kind of, she told me that I could be a doctor and I could marry a doctor, but I had to wait until I was 30 because I had to live life first. (laughs) hmm? I'm I'm, going ahead. I'm just laughing when they tell you I got to live life. What does that mean? Go ahead. So I had to focus on my studies because supposedly I was going to just automatically be so smart to get into UCLA for free. <laughs> oh, okay. And um, I mean, I'm I'm not that bright, um, but, you know, it, I was that, raised in Meaning Boston. academically smart? I, I'm not that smart. Like academically, I'm really not, you know? Okay. Okay. And, um, you know, it might have been a blessing in disguise because I was taken away when I was 10 years old. I was in foster care. But when I entered foster care, all of my foster moms were stay at home moms. And I feel mm-hmm. like they kind of taught me how to be like a wife, I guess, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And um, But I never learned cooking from my mother. I learned it actually from my father. Wow. So, yeah. And my father hold on. is actually. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Just a second. Hold on. Just a second. Hold on. Just a second. Ebony, in the Zoom call, you've muted yourself. You've muted yourself. Uh, Shalissa, here's the thing. Here's why I'm, what you're starting to hear is, I was saying this earlier, a lot of women, their mothers, like being a mother was like a second day, a part-time job. Yeah, They had you and then you're supposed to just raise yourself. I'm going to feed you. But, you know, all that, you know, learning shit, that just goes somebody else's job. Hello, how are you? I'm good. How old are you? I'm 29. Can I be seen? I mean, can I not be seen? Go ahead. What do you have on the topic? Um, I was calling because I've heard you talk on this topic of, like before, and I realized that I am literally all of that. Like okay. everything you talk about, that is me. Like I would say, I'll start with I will. I'm 29. I was married before. Close the door, boy. I was married before. I got engaged when I was 21, the day I graduated. You were married before, but you're not married now? I'm not married now. How many children? I say I don't have any kids. Okay. I'm literally everything. I don't have any kids. I got divorced that like five years ago. Um, and I'm now enrolled in a PhD program. Like So what do you so so where does where does relationship matter then in life? Would it, it, yeah, where does relationship rank for you? So right now, relationship before it wasn't up there at all. Mm-hmm. Um, when I got married, it was like top priority. It was the thing that I wanted to do. But where does it rank for you now? Now it's up there. Before, like up there on a scale from one to ten, and ten is a PhD. Where does it rank? Right now it's at eleven. So right now, if it was at eleven, if it was at eleven, you wouldn't be going to get a PhD. Well, I started the PhD and it wasn't at eleven then. My, my point, my, my 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 point is that relationships. I want you ladies to listen to what I'm about to say. Relationships are a skill. You know, they don't just happen. Relationships are a skill. We, you must be taught what a relationship is, 
what your role is and what you're supposed to do in it. So it's one thing I've to never say that. Been taught anything. Well, then, that, and so if that's the case, what are you doing to improve your relationship skills to match your urgency or your priority? So one of the things that I did was I started therapy, like right after I got divorced. And then also I started like last year um, because I realized that the okay. reason why I can't build relationships was because of my mom. Okay. So you're in, hold on. So you're in therapy. Are you still in therapy? I'm not still in therapy. Okay. Hold on. I see you, Ebony. So ma'am, I'm just make a suggestion. That PhD that you're in, are you are you currently in class with that now? So I am in my research phase now. So okay. I am not taking classes. So I'm so so but you still but but you still do work on that. I do, actually. Yeah. But the things I'm asking you about, you're not doing work on. You're not in class, you're not in therapy. You're not doing anything regarding the skills. They relationships don't just happen, especially for women who never learn this stuff. You Modern women are relationship remedial. You need to approach this like you need to like you need to pass something like summer school. You need to catch up. If you needed to, if you needed to get to pass, you had to go to summer school, get tutors and all this other kind of stuff. That's what y'all need to be doing regarding relationships. What you're telling me is talking. It sounds cool, but if you're not doing anything about it, just because you recognize it as a priority, the outcome won't change. Because you can't teach yourself. So, can I ask you a question? So Ebony, you next. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, in terms of being in a relationship and being a wife and being um, just being what's the, a wife. What's the question? I, the question is, how, how, what, how do you say that I need to start working towards that if I am already... Like, I'm confused on how, because I'm already See? like. You're, you're already do what? I'm already in my mind. I know how to to have a relationship with somebody now. Ma'am, you don't even have no, ma'am, you don't even know how to have a conversation with me. I'm, I'm just telling you, ma'am, this is, and that's why you see the women in here shaking their heads. They're like, no, you don't hear you. I hear you. Okay. They hear you. What, and this is what I need you guys to understand. So many women think because they're because they're academic, they can do something academically. That oh, I've got it figured out, and now I know how to do it. Now I know where the issue are. So you're not in therapy anymore, and there's no one teaching you relationships. You didn't learn it from your from a, a mother who had because we didn't see in the black community, we relationships are modeled. You teach kids how to be in a relationship because they watch mothers and fathers. But when you had 80% of us raised in a single parent household, relationships were uh, an aftermarket upgrade. And we all had to try to figure it out on the fly. That's why you got married early and divorced because you don't know how to do it. And the person you were with didn't know how to do it. Who's teaching you how to do it? And in your mind, you think, well, because I'm smart, I recognize this is an issue, but no one's teaching you. What I, what I think okay. I did was I recognized okay. what I did wrong or what uh -huh. I didn't know. How when to was your last relationship? When was your last relationship? I haven't been in a relationship since 2017. Like a Thank you. So, God damn it, you don't know what you're talking about. I, I see what I mean? I this is what I mean. I, Do you see the women here looking at you laughing? They're like, what are you talking about? It's this PhD shit. I'm a PhD. You're, a, you're flunking relationships. I can F. And go sit here and tell me, I think I know what I'm doing. Chick, you ain't been in a relationship since 2017 and that failed. And see, that's a, and I'm saying this in a direct way because... I need you ladies to get humble and start rec recognizing I am a relationship failure. My relationship skills are remedial. I need work and I can't do it on my own. It's like a 300 pound person talking about, uh, 
well now I'm going to I, I, I got this manual and I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to start doing my, no you need a, a new personal trainer a nutritionist and somebody to stand squarely on your back until you get into a habit of being healthy But this is the education thing. One of the worst things that happen, when, especially in our community, is you guys getting these educations. But these educations aren't helping you because y'all don't use them. Just like I talked to a woman the other day. Don't you think an education is important? And she's an elementary school teacher. But it didn't help her even in, in relationship or, light or, or relationship planning, household planning. What's your PhD going to be in? Me, um, biochemistry. Okay. And what do you plan on doing with this? Uh, going into, well, initially I was thinking about going to work for the government. One of my goals is probably to do, be a biochemist for the Navy. You want any children? I do. I How do. many? Two. Uh, okay. Who's going to raise your children if you're working for the government as a biochemist? I am. the So there's, there's. Um, okay, I'm going to come back to you. Work. I'm, I'm going to come back to you. Hey, Ebony, how are you? Oh, you're muted. You're, oh, you're... See, one of the worst things that happen is we, we just do this. You, you're muted, Ebony. On your side, you're muted. You got to unmute. Yep. Guests have themselves muted. That's what it says. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. You got to get yourself unmuted. I had you on the screen. Uh, Amberlynn and then Brittany, then we'll open it all up. So all you ladies in here, I'm going to open it up to where everybody can speak, but I want to have everybody have a chance to speak. See, I, I did that, guys, because I want you guys to understand that so many women, I wish you would just kick your goddamn education out the door. I don't care. No, that ain't helping you with the thing that a human being is. Human beings are cooperative species. Life is about relationships, not goddamn jobs and projects. And you have to learn how to work with somebody. Hello, how are you? Oh, I'm good, and you? Well, uh, how old are you? Um, I'm 25. Okay, what do you got for me on the topic? Okay, I have a little bit of a disagreement, but it's kind of nitpicky, uh if that's fine. Is um, it okay? Well, I'm one of four daughters. My mother has had six children, four daughters, and I would argue that she's a great mother, but I was raised in a way where I did not think I needed a man, but thankfully I did find a man. You were raised in a way where you didn't think you were you raised in a way to where you didn't think you need a man? Like I went in to get a science major degree. Your mother taught you that you didn't need a man? Well, my mother has been in a I'm, long relationship. I'm, ask, I'm, ask, I'm asking, is that because I'm trying to understand what you're saying. Your mother was a great mother, but you were raised in a way to think you didn't need a man. I'm not sure if it was that I wasn't raised or if that there were outside influences that convinced me that I didn't need to be. Did your mother, did your mother tell you you needed a man? Not outright, no. Okay. Uh, and your, your background is what? Is it science? Uh, industrial electronics. Okay. So in the animal kingdom, can the female of a species survive without the male? No. Okay. In human beings, can a female of the species survive in the wild and by herself? No. Thank you. You need a man. I am married. My, my point is, so yeah. my, my ultimate point is there is never a time where women don't need men so if you aren't raised to be told, hey, daughter, you need a husband, that's a failing. Your mother, as the adult, is supposed to communicate that to you as female children. We, daughters, are the smaller and the physically weaker of the species. And we need those things over there with shoulders and muscles mm -hmm. to survive. Even though we have modern electronics and conveniences, if just like coronavirus showed us, if that is over and there's a war for toilet tissue and water, we can't fight for it. That's what yeah. they do. So that's a failing. 
So you can say what you said. I will say if your mother didn't teach you, you needed a man. That's a feeling. But she showed it very well. She showed it in a lot of her actions. But did she tell you? See, showing it uh, and telling it, you got to show and tell. Show and tell. Was your mother married? Yes. Okay. But she didn't tell you. So it's got to show and tell. Show and tell. But is it not evident in like the chores she made us do? Like, it's show and tell. See, right there, you're still arguing and being, being, dis being disagreeable. That's that feminist, modernist shit. You just you just acknowledge the the science, the 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 um, everything that's rational about it. You still want to debate this? Why isn't why is what I'm saying so hard for you to acknowledge that you need to show it and tell it? I think it's more of the telling part because I think if you show it and if you're a good example, it should be picked up on. Well, look here, Becky. Let me tell you why it's not. Because in our community, women are told this all the time, but they're not shown it. And see, this is why we run the world and y'all follow us. Because you're still sitting here telling about what you, I think, okay, what do you got to base that on other than your feelings? Because showing and telling is the most effective way. Mm -hmm. Not just telling. But I mean, have you ever learned a martial art? Have you ever learned a martial art? No, actually, I have not. Have you ever studied? Have you ever done anything? Uh, let's see. Have you know how to shoot a gun? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Can I tell you how to shoot a gun? No. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can I show you how to shoot a gun? Yeah. Well, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. But but to be a better shot, can I tell you and show you? You'd have to. Thank you. Very French toast much. Okay. I don't know why the hell you got to be so argumentative, but go ahead. We just, let's just nitpick just to be calls. Ladies, show and tell your daughter. I'm, I'm not good back and forth, but you must show and tell. Show and tell, not just tell. Not just show. Because here's the thing, uh, Brittany, you're up. See, here's the thing. Some people learn by seeing. Some people learn by hearing. If, but if you learn by either or, the other one serves to reinforce what you already learned. Go ahead, uh, Brittany. Um, yeah, Kevin. Hi. How are um, you? I'm doing good. What do you got? How old are you? I'm 27. Okay. What do you have for me on the topic of this mother, um, mothers and wounded, think, fearful dogs? I think our moms. So I think that I hold. So I think our moms really like messed things up for us now, because most of the time now growing up, I'm I'm Jamaican, so I yeah. grew up in a in 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 a third world country with our moms telling us, hey, listen, men are not gonna provide for us, and they're gonna do this because I learned from an early age that men are not gonna do shit for us. The only thing that they can do is just like get us pregnant, get us effed up mm -hmm. and then we have to figure it out because that's what I, that's what i've always seen in my family growing up like mm -hmm. they're married and then like the men and the fam the, the their husbands always like like after a couple of years after kids are involved then it's like a whole different thing it's like the moms have to do everything so when i was growing up it literally showed me that listen um, you got to be strong on your own. You got to do this. You got to do that. Thank God that I have a man who is like so good to me that I don't even have to worry about certain things. And I'm so grateful for that. But then I only was grateful for this like a year ago. Because I was. So are you like, saying that? So is, is this how it was in your home country? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. how it is. Because we don't really praise men here in Jamaica. We don't really praise them. Like mm -hmm. when you do have a man that's like providing for you and everything like that, then it's like you only okay. see that when it's like a white dude. Well, let me ask you a question then. Yeah. You ever know if you if you look across the globe, mm -hmm. if you look in countries or, or or if you look in countries or cultures where the men are praised or the men are 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 spoken of in a positive way, mm -hmm. do they typically do better than countries and communities like Jamaica and, uh, and, and Eidos Black America? 
that's my whole point. See, I think it's funny, even in this country, where people can have an opinion about people who come into this country illegally across the south of the border. They'll call them all kind of names, but one thing they have is, regardless of their education, there's a strong sense of family, their roles, and they know how to stick together and get it done. But sadly, what we have is our women talking shit about us all the time. Yeah, but some of the times too, Kevin, like I, I agree with a lot of things that you say, but most of the time too, these men, like they just come and then they just like show us like, listen, you don't really need to believe in men. Not saying that I don't believe in men because honestly, like I don't want to date why I don't want to be with, if I'm supposed to be with What them, men, what, okay, are you talking about, are you talking about men in your life or men in your mother's life? No, no, no. My mom. I'm just trying to understand. I'm trying to understand what you said. These men, which men? All right, cause okay. So I don't, I don't, I don't date a, date a lot. But the thing is, like when I do come across man, and I have conversation with man, cause I work where I work is like I deal with a lot of man all the time. So which, these which, men, which, these men, which these men, be specific. Okay, the man that I come across then. Okay. The man that I have conversations with. These are men in high high places who have the titles, the money, and everything like that. You see, uh -huh. when they come across, when they come across, and they have the conversations that they have, okay, men, a lot of men know, like a lot of black men know that I know with mad money, well, in my country, and they live uh -huh. like overseas in Canada and US. Uh -huh. just, just go ahead and get to the point. Yeah, they don't really want to date us because they say, okay, black woman, we're this, we're that, especially... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. See, what you just said is, no, Kevin, when I said a lot of times our women talk crap about us, and that's on anywhere, not just here, even there. Yeah. And then you said, well, no, the men are bad too. And what are these men bad doing in almost two minutes and what you're telling me is these men don't want to date. Why would a man want to date if he's going to deal with a woman that's talking crap about him? That's true, too. Because sometimes I feel like... So stop. So stop. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. J I know I'm right. You Just are. like your mother's fucked you up. Yeah. These men watch these mothers and aunts and sisters. They know you because you were, we were raised by you. So you cannot get upset with a man who has had to do what he had to do to make himself go from here to being somebody with mad money. They don't just give that shit away, right? No, they don't. You have to make yourself valuable. You have to put yourself in the top 10% of earners or whatever. And you cannot blame somebody who was raised in an environment that you saw and I saw who can make a smart decision and say, well, you know what? For the kind of stuff I've had to deal with, survive, something and so forth, I want something different than a woman who's going to tell me these men ain't shit. True, true. You're, you're, you are right. You are right. I'm it's like, yeah. I mean, it's almost like it's almost like the notion that men should be praised and deserve something that even approximates um, reasonable treatment is like a light switch moment for many people, and I don't get it. It's like, wow, because <laughs> uh, I'm going to say that question for another time. Hold on. I'm going to open up the panel and let you guys all back in. Um, okay. Hold on. Um, Ivy, you ready? Hello? Yes, hi. How are you? Nervous. <laughs> okay, how old are you? Um, 36. All right. What do you have for me on the topic? Well, I wasn't raised by my mom. I am married. Um, I do have a one-year-old daughter. Um, but as far as my mother is concerned, I, she really wasn't in my life. I was raised by grandparents that was born 1913, 1918. So I don't know if that's the silent generation or... You're married? I, I don't know. <laughs> I am married, yes. Okay. Where's your husband? He's here. 
Why am I here? Why am I hearing the smoke detector? I'm about to say there's no smoke detector. I don't hear anything. I don't know. I, I heard the I heard the single woman tell. Dip. No. <laughs> I said my husband and my daughter is right here. <laughs> okay. If I hear it again, I'll let you know. But go ahead. So okay. your grandparents were raised in 1913. What? My grandfather that raised me was born in 1913. My grandmother was born in 1918. And my biological grandfather was born in 1928. Oh, here she is. Ebony's over there. Hold on. Let me bring Ebony in as well, too. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, I thought I heard, I thought I heard the... the uh, the single woman tell. Hold on. I'm I'm put you to the side. Ebony, you ready? Unmute yourself. Uh you gotta unmute yourself. Oh. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah. How are you? I'm well. Okay. Um so okay. Uh, you still first, have you getting background noise. Am I on uh, do you have any other Windows open other than Zoom. Uh, no, let me check. All right, then turn down your volume on your speakers a little bit, then, because we're getting a little bit. But go ahead. Okay, so I'm um, good evening. Um, first off, I was listening through like the whole broadcast. I've been like watching throughout the week, and um, I would just say like the whole mother wound thing kind of like hit home um, for me in particular. Um, mm -hmm. I would say that um, me personally, like I grew up without my mom, like she was in and out of my life, dealing with like her own mental stuff and just wandering, you know, trying to figure her life out. Um, and my grandmother raised me. So um, my grandma, I guess you would say she was like a part of like the baby boomers. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was definitely like, you know, strict household telling me like to focus on my education, not worried about guys and stuff. Um, but one thing about my upbring upbringing was that um, I was very rebellious because, you know, my family, they did tell me like not to have kids, not to get pregnant, but um, my family, like they're all full of like single mothers. So I actually wound up like going down that same path. What were you taught? Okay. Okay. Every time I speak, I'm, I'm getting like some noise on your end. So what were you taught? a man's role what is a man's function in, in in your life i wasn't taught anything about a man's function um honestly and truthfully like the experiences that i had with men the first ones were all negative um mm -hmm. there was never like really a man in my life and the one that was in my life it was um very negative so, so when uh, okay so if you were you were taught a man's function in your life. The first time a man came to you, I don't understand. It's like you see a man and you weren't taught what they're supposed to do. Why are you even talk to him? You should be like, you got no instructions. Right. Yeah. So honestly, you, go ahead. It was more like so, like fight or flight, like survival mode, just doing like whatever, you know, I thought came natural because I didn't have you know, any type of teachings. So, on so basically what you were taught men are there to have fun and sex. Um, uh, men had, okay. You weren't taught that men served a role. Right. So when you rate, when you reached an age where a man approached you, he had to be approaching you for dating reasons. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. I.e., all right, I don't know what your function is, but I know you're supposed to, to do, you're supposed to take me here and do stuff. See, that's my point. You guys don't get taught our roles. It's just like, you know, hey, a man, a, a man, is, a man is supposed to be there just to have some sex he, and, and pay a bill or two. But my, my question is, I'm going to open it all, all you guys back up. Brittany, you're there. Cynthia, I don't see where she is. Raylo, go ahead. I can, Renee. My name is Renee, please. Okay. Um, or goddaughter, considering ideal wife and all. Um, Renee. My mother, mine is a little different story because my mother, she, she gave me nothing but emotions, but I learned that emotions were 
useless because I didn't learn the same way. I was taught by Yeah, but your situation is you but your but your situation is different too. You you say you're on the you're on the what do you say you're autistic? Yes, but I was raised neurotypical among all, all right. black women, all black people. So what we're gonna, what we're gonna have to do though is no disrespect, but we got to keep this in the general, not in the specific. It is. Okay, okay, let me be specific in saying what my mother taught me was she she taught me her mouth. It was just it wasn't how to talk to a man at all. It was the worst way to communicate to a man I how, learned a how old are you how old are you 40. all right so this is why i'm going to say that even though everything i said in this program is valid at what point uh you, at your age you have to own all of it and, and fix it if you're going to have a different outcome because at 40 I say it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility. What outcomes do you want with a man in your life? Oh, that wasn't. I mean, I've been married for thirteen years now, so okay. Uh, I don't. You're, you're currently married. Yes, I'm currently married. But, but, did, did you come on here earlier saying you're the ideal wife? That's what I said. I am the ideal wife the ideal concept, like, like Anne Rand's philosopher, ideal man, concept wise, like high value woman. You on drugs. Do not come onto my show and do that. Verbally vomit diarrhea. Oh, I don't believe anything that woman is saying. I want to meet you. I'm a, I don't know. I want to meet you. No, I'm good. I'm good. All right, ladies, let's open it up. Brittany, Amberlynn, Ebony, you got a little thing going on. Vanessa, we're going to open it all up and have a conversation. So, how many, anybody on the panel have a child? If you have a child, raise your hand. Vanessa has a kid. Brittany has a kid. Amberlyn has a kid. Ebony has a kid. Brittany, no I kids. Have, I don't have no kids, Kevin. Okay, I said Brittany. There's two Brittany. Brittany, okay. and, Brittany B and Brittany E. All right. So, Brittany B, how, uh, do you want to be married one day? Oh, yes. You want children? Of course I do. How what do you how are you going to raise your daughters uh differently than you? How are you gonna raise your daughters uh based upon what you've based upon how you were raised? Okay, so my daughters are gonna be raised upon love. It's not about survival and all of that, it's about love. So the, the household that she's gonna be raised in is gonna be with me and her dad. So she's mm -hmm. gonna tell me that listen, my mom is not one of these woman who like comes to woman is like oh no you don't need a man because regardless of whatever we have whatever we achieve we still need a man at the end of the day i cannot change a tire i will i would never try to change a tire I, so of I the other ladies on of the other ladies on the platform any have you have daughters yes i have a daughter ebony you have a daughter i have a daughter okay so how are you planning on raising her um, I feel like what, for my daughter, to be honest with you, um, listening to this whole platform makes me feel like I need to, you know, get more assistance with that. Because even though I do have a daughter, I can see like how my upbringing is affecting my parenting mm -hmm. and how it can stunt her growth later on. So is, um, is anybody else planning on for the other mothers? Uh, have you had therapy or would you consider therapy for yourself and then uh, your children in the future? Yeah, I'm 
therapy. I'm all for it. Hmm. Now, I've had therapy. Okay. Vanessa? Uh, yeah, I had therapy growing up. Hmm. Well, how old is your daughter? How old is your kid, Vanessa? My baby is 10 months. Ah, so you're just getting started. Yeah. Um, Amber, Amber, you're married? Yes. Anybody else married? Any other ladies? Brittany B, Brittany E, Ebony, oh, Vanessa? Oh, no, I'm not married, Kevin. I'm okay. So, of the women that are not married, I uh, know Brittany B, you want to be married. Brittany E, do you want to be married? Um, not at this moment, Kevin. It's not a desire. It's not even a desire for me to date right now. Okay. How old is your child? She's two. All right. Um, why, why, and how old are you? I'm 33. So why, with the two-year-old and 33, why is it not even a desire? Um, because I need to work on myself a little bit more. Like I just, I okay. just did this process and I know that I'm going to give someone half of a person. So until okay. I know the whole person, I'm going to wait. Okay. Uh, are you currently in therapy right now? No, I am not. I have um, a very supportive group um, around me. I had to kind of change a couple things in my life, detach from a couple people, but I am working towards getting therapy. Now, this is where I'm going to be. I'm very direct. There's no need to work towards getting a therapist. I'm going to be very direct now, ma'am. You got a two-year-old daughter? Right? All right. Betterhelp.com is a website. Getting a therapist is simple as going a Google search and a phone call. Yeah, I've been, I mean. Let, 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 me, let me finish. I can't afford therapy. Let me finish. Let me finish. Because I knew, it was, see, you can't afford to not have therapy. How about that? Let me just bottom line. You can't afford to not have therapy. You don't know what you're doing. You got a two-year-old, and with the, if I just start asking the questions, I know it'll probably go in the tank because you got married. You had a baby without without marriage, and they say you're not prioritizing a relationship. Are you in the top ten percent of all female learners? Uh, no. Then you can't afford to not prioritize a relationship, just on a financial standpoint. So if you know you're not ready to be in a relationship because you'd be giving yourself a half a person or whatever. The thing to fix that is therapy, the work. And you can't afford to not wait. Get a part-time job, sell some plasma, strip. I don't care. Get the damn money, beg. But you can't afford to not have it, ma'am. Because, see, that's the thing. And I'm talking through you at this point. So many women can recognize there's an issue. But due respect, you're a mother now and have a child. It's more than just you. As this program today dictated, and if you ladies don't start recognizing that it's not, you got to do it for yourself and then the, the kids you have so the mistakes aren't repeated and the curses are broken because relationships, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me back it this way up. If you really truly believed that a relationship would immensely benefit your life, Financially, spiritually, emotionally, and greatly improve your happiness on this planet now and until your end of days. Would you want? Would you want to be in one? Yes, if you put it in. Facebook. Okay. Yes. 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 And how long would you want to wait before you got into that happy, healthy, functioning situation that makes life worth living? How long would you want to wait? want to do it immediately thank you thank you that's the point but because we don't look at relationships like kids looking at christmas when they got a bike under there you look at relationships like kids looking at a gift bag with some damn socks in it i can wait i can't wait to get some damn socks and a gift bag see y'all may think i'll just be talking shit i do make sense it's how we think of relationships so, you know, just like I know, come on now, you, you've had your mama or somebody do this. Mom, I want my dessert. You got to eat all these peas and Brussels sprouts first. You're like, I don't want that. But that, that, that one dessert you like, you, you, you ate that shit up, didn't you? 
Because you got because you wanted to get to the dessert. Relationships yeah. should be like dessert. So you got to eat your Brussels sprouts, which is therapy. Betterhelp.com. There are plenty of resources online for people who have a, a financial challenge. Let me say this to the audience and people hearing this on a replay. Lack of money is not, is not, N-O-T not, a viable excuse in today's world for not seeking help. There are too many people who are willing to help you if you will just be willing to put yourself out there and ask. Hell, I'm quite sure there'll be people in the comment section saying, I'll help you. Happens all the time on this platform. So but thank you for being honest because most people wouldn't even risk saying that. But we can't wait, ladies. We can't. Especially if you have children under five, because these are very important years. Um, anybody want to add anything to that before I bring somebody else in? Any thoughts on what I just said? Um, yeah, I do, Kevin. Go ahead. Okay. So when you're saying that we should get help, I think it's very, very important that we do get help because like a couple of years ago, I battled with some stuff that I went through in relationships and it was really, really messed up. And I had to like, in order for me to be the person that I, to, 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 to be the positive person that I am today, I had to work on myself. I had to work on everything, emotion, a therapist, and believe me, it was hard. Like I couldn't even think that, you know, like you're looking at yourself at this as this perfect person. Cause a lot of us as black women, we look at ourselves like this perfect person, like, oh mm -hmm. yeah, we do this, we do that. We're so perfect. Oh, our weaves are always intact or whatever. Mm -hmm. is, it's just really messed up. And you know what? Let me let me let me let me share something very vulnerable with you guys. Yeah. When I was going through some of the darkest periods in my life. Panic attacks, anxiety attacks, just just some just some stuff. That, this is for you guys and everybody else. The notion that I needed help bothered me. I'm a smart man. I'm a competent man. I'm all these things. But guess what? When I finally decided to get some help, I went into a room and the people that were getting help were smart men, people smarter than me, attorneys, cardiac, uh, uh, cardiac surgeons, blah, blah, blah. But these issues are human issues. And when I first went, I had to humble myself and check my ego. And I didn't, I would sit in the car dreading to go down and have my session. But as I put my shit to the side and start doing the work, yeah. I started to enjoy the process. Because life was changing. I was figuring stuff out. Things were starting to be clear. To the point to where I would get to my sessions early. I'm yeah. I'm going to class like a kid who's what you if you've ever gone to class and you've studied so much, you want your teacher to give a pop quiz because you know you're gonna make a, a 100 and the bonus questions. If you sitting in the front of the class like this, give me the goddamn pop quiz. I dare you. I dare you to give me a pop quiz. I'll embarrass your ass for giving me a pop quiz. Yeah. I went from sitting in the back of the class flunking to sitting in the front of the class and the class was my life. And that's why we think of therapy is something that's like to be afraid of, ashamed of and understand that it is something that will change your overall existence because those are real adult tools that you can use to change how we look at the world. Go ahead, Vanessa. You had your hand up? Oh, no, no. Okay. So, I mean, so I'm glad you mentioned that fact about you know, black women feeling like they got it all together. Well, the world tells you black girl magic, strong, independent, don't need it. I reject the myth of the black, uh, of the super, super black woman. No, black women are women just like anybody else. And you are, you deserve to be tender, yeah. vulnerable, and and and, 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 and broken and flawed, just like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, Final thoughts before we get out of here. Um, Vanessa, you have anything else you want to add? Um, well, kind of, yeah. Go um, ahead. I actually went to therapy a lot um, mm -hmm. growing up. Mm -hmm. And my therapist would actually tell me to start detaching from my mother, you know, that her choices were her choices. And honestly, my, my life is 
better without her and that i feel like almost bad saying that you know but no you shouldn't you shouldn't you're supposed to de you're supposed to detach from your parents it's good look like i feel like if i would have dedicated my life to like helping my mother i wouldn't have my man i wouldn't be getting you, exactly you know, thank you <laughs> like i put my family first and it feels really good to do that and um yeah i've just had to stop talking to family members from my mom that try to like guilt trip me you know it's called detaching oh. with love yeah. yeah it is human it is natural for you us to grow up and detach from our family and then come back as fully functioning adults it's a different level of relationship appreciate it um who else uh ebony you have something you want to say before we end up yeah so um right. first off like i'm kind of piggybacking on what vanessa said um mm -hmm. that was like a really good point um my i guess comment or question would just be about the detachment part mm -hmm. um uh, my grandmother, she raised me, so she's still in my life. She's still alive, mm -hmm. but um, I love her, but she put, like, a lot of, like, negative negativity into me, mm -hmm. um, but because she was kind of, like, the matriarch um, in my family and kind of, like, my mother figure, um, you know, she still helps me as far as, like, with the kids. And, you have a you know, question about it, though? Me. Yeah, because I feel like... How to detach? It's called detach yeah, with love. Okay, let me give you an example. It's called detach with love, meaning... You don't have to physically leave them, especially somebody who's an elderly parent. You don't have much time. But like, uh, I'll give you an example. Let's say your let's say she's negative, and she and, and you know when she's about to start that 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 BS. You know it. So what you do in your mind is you say, "Bless your peanut head," and you just kiss on her forehead, and you go to the other room. That's all you do. When she's about to say, you know, I can't stand your granddaddy and I can't stand Miss Cheryl. And Miss Cheryl came over here and I went, oh, my gout's flaring up. And God damn it, them folks down at the car wire. And, and she started, and you just be like, bless your peanut head. And you walk on off. And guess what? Believe it or not, hand to God, she'll learn that every time I start talking about BS, my baby says, bless your peanut head and leaves. They will start to self-edit. I've seen it in my own life. It's detaching with love without having to really leave. Because you ain't going to change nobody that old. You just get to bless your peanut head. And you keep doing it. Because if you go in their front room and she following you in your front room, you bless your peanut head. You walk back to the back room. You faster than that shit. Make, make a keep up. You'll tire her ass out. You're like, oh, You're right. shit, I'm tired, girl. Right. Ah, just turn on Family Feud or some shit. You'll be all right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now. See, I, people think I'll just be talking. I know. I know this shit is not easy, but it is so worth it. Uh, Brittany B., what do you got? You muted yourself. Okay, Brittany, Brittany E., what do you got? What? E., anything you want to say bye? Um, thank you so much, Kevin, for having me on your platform to kind of get help on myself and give me a sense of direction. I appreciate you and I appreciate what you do. And thank, thank you Bye. very much. Bye bye. All right. Uh, B, you're going to end out on you. Go ahead. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Hi. So you got anything you want to end with? Yeah. I just wanted to thank you because, listen, like, us black women we've been like messing this shit up for like a <laughs> long time and you know what kevin you see because we want because um like most of my friends a lot of us like like two of us were married they're married not we're mm -hmm. but i just get into being because i want to be married too right but they're married mm -hmm. a lot of us were singles we're single mm -hmm. and the thing is we never really had nobody who come on and said, hey, listen, because everybody wants this perfect thing. And nobody is sharing the secret. Nobody is sharing the secret. Nobody is sharing the secret. Nobody is telling us that, listen, young girl, do this. Young girl, do that. Everybody wants this perfect life. Mm -hmm. The woman who, the, all of the other women, the other black women who are married to black men who are successful, they're not sharing the gems with, the gems with us. It's, it it takes, like, I only have one yeah. other Kevin, Kevin Samuels before you. That was my cousin who was married. She's in like a really good relationship. She was the one who said to me, listen, if you want this, you got to do this. You got to put down your ego. You got to put mm -hmm. down your pride. And you got to work on this. 
Nobody oh. tells us to work on nothing. Everybody just say, okay. Well, here's, my, here's, my, here's my suggestion in that case. Because you're right. Yeah. You're right because it's not enough. And I hear more women like yourself looking for those things. So when you be the start of that where you are, you yeah. start talking to people around you who are looking for it and you make your own network. And believe it or not, you draw these things to you because yeah. sadly, so many of our women are just sitting back holding the secrets to themselves or whatever. But if you start yeah. talking about it, next thing you know, maybe you start your own little your own little network or your own little group of folks. And and I think the universe will actually bring things to you as you start working it. That's what I've seen most of my life. If, if there's not something there, um, I just speak it into existence, kind of make it. Yeah, because Kevin, yes, he wants that. Okay, so before I started listening to you, listening to you like mm -hmm. a year ago, right? Mm -hmm. And when when I started to listen to you, I was like, this dude is crazy. I was like, <laughs> why am I listening to this dude? I was like, why not listen to that money here for? Because he's like talking a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. And then one day, like my dad was in the car with me, and he said, "Where did you find this man?" I was like, "Daddy, my, the man is an idiot. He's a goon." And he said to me, "Say." Listen to me. This is the way how I talk. And if you do want certain things, you have to buckle your head and know, say, listen to me, little girl. This is what you want. And he mm. said to and he said to me, said to me that oh, I want you to have this. I want you to have that. And at the same time, I had this guy in my eye. Hold on, baby. I'm gonna come right there. Okay. And okay. That's my little niece, by the way. Okay. Um, he said to me, I had this guy in my eye. Real nice guy he lives overseas makes good money and everything like that real nice generous everything and i like told him about him and he was like um so you don't think that you should change your attitude and stop trying to be this person stop trying to be this 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 strong person and stop trying to be this whatever 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 because you know how we try to say we're so mm -hmm. strong and we don't need this and we don't need that and he said that to me and i like talked to my cousin and we were talking i said to her you have to take me to work this morning because I need to talk to you about this. And then right. she said to me, um, let's talk. We, we were on the road and we were talking. And she said to me, Hold on, Ayana, your audio is not connected. Go ahead, oh. go, take about another 20 seconds, Britt. I'm going to bring somebody yeah, else I in. Said that, listen to me. You have to work on this. You have to do this. You have to do that. And then I know that I never wanted the outcome. I'm also the woman that I see around me. I don't want this. Like you have this these titles, but at the end of the, at the, at the, end of the day, we still like go home and we're still in this big house and there's no there's no man there's no companionship there's nothing there well there's nothing there and it's messed up well the thing is a lot of i think like i said a lot of times women have to go ahead and forgive themselves for what they don't know and just decide that tomorrow is the start of the rest of your life because you can't change what we've already done uh, a, a lot of life can change in, in, in 12 months. Appreciate it, Britt. I'm bringing Ayana in. I'm going to end this one out. Ayana, your microphone's not connected, uh, so she can't connect her audio. See? Now, to all the people who say, I hate women, they'll never play this. They'll never play that last part. And that's okay. Uh, the bottom line is recognize, man, we're all broken. We're all flawed and none of us perfect. And this platform is not meant to be like, we're good and you're bad, high value, low value. Nah, come on, man. That's not even this. When you start getting better and start doing better, start wanting better, you start drawing different things to you in life. Remember, we talk about you attract what you are. Well, one of the best things you can do is start truly understanding who you are why you are, and then start living life on purpose for yourself. So that's the whole beautiful thing about being a man on the purpose. You 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 wake up in the morning ready to go because you got a purpose. Well, guess what? As a woman, too, you can have a purpose. And part of the purpose needs to be for women that, hey, wanting a, a, a solid uh, long-term relationship, marriage, and family is something to is a worthwhile thing. It's better than the, these so-called careers and jobs and whatever. You can't take none of that with you. But everything, 
But everything else we're talking about, that's what makes, because guess what? I'm walking around the malls and now the Christmas stuff is up. The holiday season stuff is up. And that's the time, this is the time of the year I start to see so many depressed women because they know damn well they ain't going to, the Christmas tree, they, you know how many fine, attractive women don't even put up a Christmas tree? No Christmas tree, ain't nobody buying you no gifts. You buying your dog slippers and, and, and like uh, bow ties and shit. So go ahead and unmute yourself. No, make this the last year you buy yourself. Uh, hello. Hey, how are you? I am well. How old are you? I'm 40. I will be 42 on Tuesday. All right. What do you got for me on the topic? I'm just glad you're having this conversation because I think it needs to be had. Um, I have a 25 year old daughter and I encourage her a whole lot to, you know, be a whole person, look mm -hmm. for a mature relationship. She's 25. She has no kids. And mm -hmm. She seems to have a problem with like engaging with a man. And um, I know that that's, that has a lot to do with me from what I've gone through with my mom. So mm -hmm. you know, I do encourage her to, you know. Okay, so, so I'm at how, she's just 25? Mm -hmm. Any children? No, she has no kids. Okay. Um, so, if you had to say what you taught your daughter regarding relationships and men, what would you say you taught her a man's function is in her life and the importance and priority of being in a emotionally profound, significant relationship or marriage? I would say that I taught her to, to honor a man, um, to look for a man to be your head, to um, to be a, a, a obedient woman. She seems to have a really sharp tongue. So, on a scale from one to ten, where would you where would you say you taught her that a relationship should be as far as a priority in her life? A ten. <laughs> okay, and if you taught her to honor in these things, uh, what did you teach her that she should do for a man? basically be loyal you know to sacrifice um to be a listener to not just you know be so demanding all the time and to be open you know so how how would if, if you so what what is one of the ways you would teach your daughter any of these things um i try to be an example okay are you married when was your longest relationship? What was my longest relationship? Mm -hmm. I was married for about five years. Okay. Uh, how old was she when you divorced? She was 10. All right. So since 10 years old, what's your longest relationship? Uh, about three years. Okay. Did she know him? Yes. And you, cause see what I'm trying to get to is when I ask mothers, these questions, I tend to get these general kind of answers. I've taught her how to honor, be loyal. And I, I consider these like, um, just kind of taglines. But then when I ask, how did you go about teaching that? And you say, you're an example. So in your three year relationship, where did you teach her loyalty? being a listening ear, honoring a man. But specifically, did you bring your daughter and show her during that three-year relationship? Yes, we lived together. We were, you know, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm asking. I'm, 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 and wife every day. Mm -hmm. So she mm -hmm. saw me, you know, treat and honor him and okay. respect him and all of these things. So why did you guys not decide to, you guys weren't married though? No. Is there a reason you guys decided to end things? Yeah, his brother didn't like me. He had a twin brother who didn't like that. You know, he was he didn't have any kids, and mm -hmm. his brother um, said that. So he left. He was wasting his time with me. No, no, no. So I'm saying your ex left. He no, ended it. 
No, I left. Why? Well, we were in a situation where we had to get a new place and he didn't want to get the place. He wanted me to get the place. And so I moved in with my mom. Now, which do you was a bad idea. Do you, <laughs> see, do, do you see how what you yeah. just tried to tell us yeah, I, I taught her by example. Mm-hmm. And when the situation happened, instead of staying with the man you say that you're using, that you're with, and as an example of how to be with the man for your daughter, you left your man and went to your mama. And then I asked you why you're not together. And you said, because his brother didn't like you. No, you're not together because you left him. True that. So That's you didn't. Someone- so that's what you taught your daughter, that a man is to be left. Mm, and you wonder why your daughter has a sharp tongue and is disrespectful or whatever. Would you say what would you say what you did? If I asked your ex what it was like to be with you, he would say being with you is blank. Blissful. He's trying to get back. Okay. Blissful. He may have, but you left him. I did. So, was that respectful? No. So, are you surprised that your daughter has an issue? I'm really not surprised. I just, you know, I just want to try to work it out. Work what out? Kevin, I know. Okay, so see, don't get defensive now, because it's one thing you, you ladies say you know, but in order to fix it, you got to put your ego under the ground. Definitely. Saying I know and I know, that can't be. Because if you know, then you can't say why. The reason your daughter does what she does is she watched you and she listened to you. And and she based on how to treat a man based on what she saw and what you taught her. That's all this broadcast was about. Daughters have been taught where to prioritize men? Men are there for like you and her dad aren't together, but y'all are married, right? No, you, you were married. To, uh, you said you were married. You said I you were married, not to her but, father. But you were married for five years. Yes. Is her father alive? Yes, her father's still alive. Why didn't you guys? How long were you guys together? Um. Three, four years. After she was born? Yes. Why didn't you guys get married? He's not that type of guy. <laughs> what do you mean? He liked to have a bunch of kids. How many kids does he have? Like 14 and counting. And, and, where, and where are you at? And, and where's your daughter in, in the birth order? She's the second from the oldest. So he had one child before your daughter? Nope. He, he snuck one in on me. Actually, he had two. So he had two kids. Ki- I didn't know about the second one. Yeah. But you knew about the first one? Yeah. Okay. See, one of the issues also tends to be when you ladies have kids, you go out and make children with these serial impregnators. My dad had a lot of kids, but I don't know what y'all think that teaches kids. That teaches us that we're not really valuable because one man can go out and get all these different women pregnant. And then another man has to come along and. I'm sorry, Kevin. I got to pick my kids up. <laughs> go ahead. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and finish doing this one. Okay. But, okay. But see, a lot of a lot of this stuff, man, gets taught. See, and, 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 I, and this is a good show, young ladies. I want you to understand that there are a lot of women out there who say they don't know why their daughters do what they do. And their daughters do what they do because that's what they were taught. You got one child, you got a daughter with a guy with 14 kids. And, and you wonder why she's rebellious and got a sharp tongue. Well, she probably ain't sitting around looking at all these damn siblings and like, Honestly, you're like, what the fuck? How fucking special am I? My daddy's out here fucking you, 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 and all these kids. 
Why was not I born in the context of a loving, happy, successful relationship and planned for? I came along because of some Hennessy and, and, and a good time. So a lot of kids feel. A lot of kids feel like, why am I here? My dad is this. Why did you choose this dude? Because two kids, her, didn't marry him. Then you went and married a guy you were with five years, divorced him with another man. You lived with him, left him. No disrespect, ma'am, but what in the hell do you think your daughter was taught? Do you think me and are? If you're pregnant by this one, divorcing this one and leaving this one. A am I missing something? So this is why, ladies, I want you to understand that a lot of times. For those listening, those men are stupid for giving that man money. We will continue to support this brother doing the work. One of the reasons I divorced my mother is because my wife's leaving. Mother's leaving. Look, look, man. I want to try to be as respectful to the situation as possible. But a big part of the ladies, I need you to understand. This is going to sting. This is going to sting, moms. And but I'm not saying it to be mean, but it's going to sting. If your daughters are failing at relationships, it's because you failed her as a mother. You failed to teach her the importance. If you can't keep a man, if you're leaving men, if you're having babies out of wedlock, you got to look at the lesson that teaches to a girl. It teaches an equally deleterious message for boys. But we're focusing on the girls right now. Many women teach their daughters that men are utilities, beasts of burden, sexual objects. There's something to be used and discarded. Men are to be used and discarded. So again, if you're under 40, I know I just threw a shot that's, like I said, this video is not going to do exceptionally well. It's already been massively limited. But this is probably going to be one of the most beneficial broadcasts because it's going to at least spark a conversation. I would suggest you guys start doing some research on mother wounds. My personal suggestion is you listen to people who are who are teaching on it who are qualified to teach on it because i'm just talking about it i'm not going to teach on it not my it's not my i'm not qualified like they are i could talk about what i know but i would say i would lean away from women who teach this stuff from a feminist womanist railing against men and the patriarchy standpoint such and so forth don't, there's no there's no this mother wound thing has nothing to do, uh, uh, well, there's just no, uh, uh, <laughs> really against a patriarchy when you're living in a first world country, stupid. You can only be a feminist in a first world country. So I don't really, you know, those kind of feminists, but I'm a feminist, you know. Google mother wounds, look it up. Look up mother-daughter type relationships. This does not mean, and I don't want you to be angry with your mother or, you know, you need to forgive your father, judge your mother as harshly as you judge your father, forgive them both, forgive yourself, do the work and move on. Because that's the best we can do. That's what I try, that's what I try to do in my life. Forgive, forgive the people in your life who hurt you. Forgive yourself for hurting people. And, and and do the best to move forward. That's it. But life is about people and it is about relationships. And I am telling you here in Atlanta, 
I see so many beautiful black women. And I look on their left finger and it is empty. It's vacant. And I'm just like, wow, another holiday season's coming up. And that sister, ain't, this sister got nobody to cook for for Thanksgiving. You ain't, you ain't buying, you ain't buying me. Look, you ain't buying me, your man. You ain't buying me the latest La Lo. You're not, you're not saying, ooh, girl, you know, Kevin, he loves Le Labo. Yeah, I'm going to buy Kevin the newest Le Labo and the new candle from Dip Teat, girl. Yeah, and I love the way he looks in that Tom Ford Windsor black. So I ordered him. Uh, this Glenn Plaid, Tom Ford, blah, 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 blah. And I got him these, such and so forth. Yeah, mm hmm And I got him this up here. Yeah, that, that's what I got for my boo. And knowing you're going to end up getting what I'm going to get for you. And you actually, have you ever bought something for a man and was happy to give it to him? Have you ever got something for a man and you was happy and he surprised you? We think of relationships like root canals. French toast that. And the way I think we fix this is fix the market. You fix the market by addressing the issues that are holding a lot of women back. So when I talked about the market is open for competition, oh, it's still open. It's still open. I'm not closing. It's still open. But don't, but I don't want it to be said that even I love black women. You're my preference. I am doing everything I can to give the black women who want to win a leg up in the competition. I am doing my level best to give you an advantage. So, but the advantage is coming through work. You may look good. You may have the bomb so-and-so, but if your software is contaminated, coming with viruses on it, you can't keep them. But if you start to do the work, and get to ground zero, you can keep what you get. So to my critics and detractors, you cannot say that I do not at least try to leave this place a better place than I found it. You may not agree with my techniques. You may not agree with my approach. You may not agree with a whole lot of that stuff, but who loves you, baby? Who loves you, baby? I do. So that's what it is. It's the holiday season. Uh, we're going to, you know what? Somebody asked me to do the matchmaking show. Uh, I think I may do one tomorrow night. Uh, if you guys want me to, I'm going to put a post up on my community wall. If you guys want me to do the matchmaking show where men and women kind of hook up together. Yeah. Maybe do that tomorrow night. Cause uh, yeah, start, Gentlemen and ladies, I think you need to put out a boyfriend application and a girlfriend application. It is cuffing season is here. Winter is almost up. Winter is here. You are getting information to help you win. Who loves you, baby? You're beautiful. Who loves you, baby? You're beautiful. I'm giving you information to win, but you got to be willing to do something about it. You got to be willing to do something about it. And the first step is admitting this. You know what? I may not have gotten what I needed growing up, but I can do something about this. I can do something. I hope that this holiday season, you will be sharing it with somebody that you love. I hope you and your you and your man are fighting over whose house you going to for Thanksgiving. I hope you have to argue and say, uh uh, we're gonna go to your mom, we're gonna go to my my we're gonna go to your mama's house for Thanksgiving. We're gonna spend Christmas with my family. I hope you have that argument. I hope you have that argument. I hope you have to have the knockdown drag out argument for whose family we're gonna spend most of the holidays with. That is a good thing. That is a good thing to have to fight and say, you know what? We're going to go to your grandma, your mama's house. We spent last Thanksgiving at my mama's house. So this Christmas, we spent it with my, my family. 
We're going to give the short holiday to your family and a long one to mine. That is a life worth living. Not these empty ass Charlie Brown Christmas trees. I'm a PhD. I don't need a cookbook. Huh. I am tired of seeing black women having to spend Christmas with this Charlie Brown ass Christmas tree. This is the modern woman's Christmas tree. That's the modern woman's Christmas tree. Tired of seeing that. When your Christmas tree should look like this. Tired of, aren't y'all tired of this shit? Aren't you tired of... I ain't putting up no Christmas tree. Walking through your house spraying a uh, pine spray. No, no pine spray. How about a Christmas damn tree? Hmm? No pine spray, a Christmas tree. Hallu Lore Hallu Yeah 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 We can choose to change this shit, ladies. But it ain't gonna just be because you got the wop. You got to actually do something different. Alright, people. You know how it is. This has been a hard one, this has been a tough one. Oof. It's kind of exhausting. My arms hurt. Oh, the damn vaccine over here and the flu shot over here. God. Even though I already had COVID, you know, just had to keep that shit down. Anyway, it's cuffing season. Oh, yeah. Am I taking out boo applications? Yes. Godfather's officially thinking boo thing applications. If you want to be the boo thing, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Who loves you, baby? And you guys, you guys, the only people that can use my Instagram DMs are women. I'm taking this from Simple to P. Y'all men need to, don't, men sending me a, a, a DM seems wrong. If you're a guy and you want to connect with me, send me an email. Do not send me a DM. I'm going, I'm having my assistant go through all my DMs and every male face that's there. She, bow! Don't send me no damn DM as a man. Wifey applications, that's right. Looking for my next, let's say my last, my last next ex-wife. <laughs> so yeah, Godfather's pro relationship. But the relation, but but you you hear how I talk. This is what I think in real life. So if you can't deal with this, don't don't contact me. If you think you're going to contact me, you think it's going to be a challenge. There ain't going to be no challenge. This is what I really believe. I don't care how fine you are. Uh, and, and understand, I'm 52 years old. I'm not going to blow your back out. You know, I, I'm too old and too successful to have to try to prove something to you in the bedroom. No, thank you. I'm going to give you three to five really, really good minutes and then I'm going to go to sleep. I'm not going to blow your back out. I'm going to try to keep from throwing my hip out. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. I look good when I take this shit off, but you better be like some salt and pepper pubic hair, baby. Come on. Oh, that's right. But it smells good. Smells good, it looks good, feels good, but I'm not going to try to stay up all night and do no tricks. That's your job. Your job is to make sure that I come home to you. That's your job. Your job is to make sure you eat the pineapple and drink the pineapple juice. Makes you taste better. <laughs> I don't mind Kevin. Kevin is right. Come on, man. Look, man. 
I, I wish you would try to get a man. I'm not going to try to impress you with that shit. I'm going to, you want going to impress you? This motherfucking mortgage is paid and that car is paid off and these bills are paid. That's, ooh, what's going to get you wet? Here's the 401k balance. That's, ooh, ooh, girl, uh huh. You want to diddle yourself? Look at the Philadelphia investment. Oh, girl, what happened, girl? I just looked at the 401k and I checked the balance. Oh, oh, oh shit. Yeah, squirt that. <laughs> Trying to fuck around. Hey, hey, that's the advantage of being my age. I ain't got to have a six pack. Deal with these 20 year olds. That's broke shit. And I ain't going to buy you either. So if you think uh, just because I support men that high value men have options and just because. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Because if I were to buy you, I'm buying you for a reason. I would go straight seeking arrangements and, and give you a short term contract with a maximum cap payout. And believe me, the better position is Miss is Miss Boothang. You don't want to go Julia Roberts, a uh, pretty woman. She already demonetized, right? That's what I'm saying. Already demonetized. But hey, man. Oh, lastly, and no matter who Boothang becomes, I'm not gonna put it up on my Instagram, on my YouTube. Any woman I deal with, that's my private life. And you guys know, just like I know, um, how the internet is. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> All right. That was good. That was great. Till the next time, y'all. Yeah, however, peace. We are gone. My new recliner shows up. Can't wait for it. It's not hard to fool me. Nothing like having all white it's furniture. To the good life. Yeah. The way when you have all white I furniture, you can tell there are no toddlers in this month. White leather furniture? <laughs> Looks like a James Bond villain. <laughs> You must have popsicle toes. You must have beautiful toes. Beautiful toes, great legs. Must be. Yoga, Pilates, cardio, yes. My leg man. Come on, Keisha. Got to be like, what, what, girl? Kevin, open competition up and win. <clears throat> I'm a PhD. Cause I ain't blowing no back out shit. So you know what it is? If they ever decide to try to go to social media to talk shit and be like, girl, he told you he gonna give you three three good minutes. Talk shit about a 52 year old man if you want to. <laughs> oh, have a good that was funny. You guys gotta admit that was funny. Good night.